Everybody with me? And so ethnocentrism is a dirty word today, as it should be, because most of us are coming from higher value systems. But at one time, that was a pretty incredible extension of love and care and compassion beyond our own skin and our own mind. And so as evolution kept going, we moved into this rational consciousness, which unlocked, guess what? A third perspective. Now the third perspective can objectify. It's not just I. It's not just I and thou, as long as we're a we. It can also be objectified to someone I don't know, see, share any values with, but know, for instance, a child may be starving in Indonesia, and I can have concern about them. And it offered, then, a truly world-centric perspective. And so it shouldn't be any surprise to know that this is also when every single industrialized nation that attained world-centric consciousness outlawed slavery. And here's one that's hard to hear for the retro romantics. All of these cultures had slaves. That's a big ouch for a lot of us. Apache Indians kept Comanche Indians as slaves. They raped their women, they killed their men, and they put them in chains. So did African tribes. It's a stage of consciousness. And it wasn't until we transcended that and reached this world-centric capacity that we could bear down on that ethnocentrism and say there's something better. And that was another layer of complexity, another opening up of the mind to now take three perspectives. First, second, and third person. Is everybody following me? And if we are lucky, within our 20s, we grow to this postmodern pluralism and four perspectives, and we start to take into account all sentient beings and even the environment as a living organism. And most of the people attracted to this come in here at this postmodern pluralism stage of development which has been the leading edge of evolution. It's very highly evolved. And here's the thing. As we grow through this now, what we know from an Epoch 6 perspective that's not well known here, here, or here, are that all of these stages form building blocks of our very own minds and being. And that we have to transcend and include all of these in a healthy, highly functional way. We have to jettison the parts of those that have become obsolete because you can't be both ethnocentric and simultaneously world-centric or universalistic-centric. So those become mutually incompatible. But we have to take the enduring features of that stage into that next transcendence as we grow. And one of the glaring problems with postmodernity right now 
is the messy way that development has unfolded for most people. And they are very broken and very damaged within a lot of areas of the spiral, that, uh, spiral of their own development. And we get up into here, this is what's happened. Okay, most of these stages emerged as a response to the quote-unquote dark ages that had set in at the end of the previous stage of culture. What's called in development the uh, deficiency stage. So there's a certain level of emergent growth incredible flourishing at this stage and then problems start to set in. Why? Because we start creating a world that becomes more complex than what we can keep up with. What's out there becomes more complex than what's in here. So the solution is to emerge to the next higher mind where we can open up more perspectives, process more complexity. That correlates with brain physiology, the ability to create more complex patterns and coherence in the brain. All has to emerge higher brain with higher mind. And so for instance, when the uh, ethnocentric stage entered into the dark ages and people were killing each other and murdering each other at record rates, and for also for the retro-romantic uh, return to Eden New Age fantasy, you had about a 3.5 to 1 chance of dying at the hands of another human being in these cultures. And so as you start to move up into here, the rational structure starts to emerge. You start to look down on this, and in the same way that you see that as a child that Santa Claus isn't really filling that sleigh with all of the toys because you can't, your, third per, your third perspective ability to objectify and empirically evaluate it, it, it is a higher level truth than this mythic literal way of making sense out of the world. And in the same way, the people that started to emerge into this new renaissance consciousness were able to look back at the mythic literal dark ages and say, wait a minute, I don't think that there's this vengeful god that is raining locusts down on everyone or that uh, you know Caesar has some magical powers or that uh, you know, we need to kill someone because they believe in Islam or they believe in Christianity, it starts to not make sense because the rational structure has come online. And so from that not making sense then, it starts to emerge this post, this modern or modernist worldview. Now I want to, this is where it starts to get real for us. Because one of the hallmarks then of this ethnocentric mythic literal stage of development when we start to transcend that because we see that these irrational mythic beliefs are lower level truths than what has emerged in us basically everything we start doing here is a counter to this right and this is the new stage is created as a solution to the problems that started to fill the old stage and at its deficiency in ending. So are you with me? It's also how we grow. And it's probably why some of you are here, because you're hitting the deficiency stage of the current worldview and the current ability to process complexity within the world that's been created. And so as the deficiency stage sets in, the rational worldview pops up. The third, pers the third perspective, the objective perspective, then a a led to the scientific revolution. It led to empirical evaluation. It led to rational thought. It led to critical thinking. It led to reason starting to dominate. And then what happened is all of that 
critical thinking, all of those scientific breakthroughs, all of those economic systems such as capitalism that freed a ton of people from enormous amounts of poverty, all start to hit their deficiency stage and start to come undone. And now that progress that was so awesome within the scientific revolution, within the corporate structures, within capitalism, now that is destroying the environment. And now it's creating wealth gaps. And now it's leading to profound alienation. The biggest loss of meaning we've ever seen in American culture is occurring right now. And as a response to that progress, that all that progress aimed at a achievement, at more, at consumerism, we see the indignities of that. We see what it's doing to the world, right? It was a good thing when it happened. It freed a lot of people. But now it's in its deficiency stage. And postmodernity emerged as a response to this runaway progress. This is where it gets real for us. So what postmodern he did then was just start to put the brakes on progress. But what it misunderstood, because it has now entered its deficiency stage, what it misunderstood was that progress can be interchanged for evolution, depending on what it's attached to. And so the progress of this modernist worldview, so much of it was oriented towards fiscal gains, consumerism, shareholder value, and that hit a, li a, a limit. It started destroying the environment, it started leading into its deficiency stage, and so postmodernity then says, this is bad. We have to stop it. where this stage creates, builds up, promotes progress, I'm sorry, this modernist stage creates, builds up, creates progress, this stage sees how all of that destroys the environment, creates wealth gaps, creates reductions of meaning, alienates people, And therefore, its response to that is one of anti-growth, anti-progress, anti-creation. And the stage is called, the, the primary philosophy of, of this stage is called deconstructionism. And that word ought to say a lot about what it stands for. What it stands for is deconstructing, tearing down. And so the postmodern mind has figured out how to find everything wrong with the previous worldviews, including modernity, the rational worldview. And because it acted so hard and harshly as the antidote to this runaway progress, it created a problem that we're going to have a really hard time recovering from. Because deconstruction without offering creation, innovation, solution is usually a lot worse than what we had. Because there's a vacuum. And within that vacuum, now, the bifurcation point we are forced to either move down or move up because you can't exist in a vacuum for very long. And that's what we're in. We're in a postmodern, deconstructive vacuum where nothing in the world makes sense to anybody anymore because everything has been deconstructed and nothing has been replaced with higher level systems that only come from metacognition. 
So the deconstruction of this has left us in a very, very dire space. And we have to get to here quickly because from here, from this next stage of evolution, what I call the emergence of the authentic self, we can see the whole spiral of development and see the 13.8 billion year arc of evolution that created it. And we can start to embody that and we can start to understand the direction of evolution and start to know that deconstructing something without providing solution or innovation or creation is anti-evolutionary. And that's what's happened here. And we're swallowed in this postmodern predicament or deconstructive nightmare. And the vast majority of the world right now has nowhere to go. They don't know where truth comes from. They don't know what's true. They don't know where to source truth. And it's just this state of uh, what I call on this moving floor of spinning in this stuff. And because of it, what's happened, because of the deconstruction, what's happened is so much of our people that moved into this postmodern thought process or perspective taking or worldview or value system, which is what it is, so many of the people that moved into that can't find their footing. And all they know how to do is deconstruct all of this and find what's wrong in all of this. But na nature abhors a vacuum. And nobody has provided the escalator to move them up and what they're doing is moving down. And right now, so many of the people within postmodern consciousness are adopting very primitive, magical ideologies, value systems, and worldviews to try to process the world because they can't get there from here. Complexity has exceeded the capacity of the brain. So what do you do when complexity exceeds the capacity of the mind-brain? You don't just sit there deconstructing and going in a million pieces. You find something that has a center of gravity for you. And if it's not available up here, you go down here. And this is what we're seeing. We're seeing it politically right now. educationally and we're seeing it in the groups in the yoga studios in the mindfulness communities in the shamanic practices in the new age in the new thought in the unity churches the ones that need to be building the conveyor here are returning to magic mythic thinking That is pre-rational, not post-rational or trans-rational. There are deeper truths than rationality can disclose, but they lie this way, not this way. And there's a new, there's a name for the people within postmodernity now, within the social sciences, the uh, developmental sociologists primarily, because this is called modern, modernist, or modern worldview, and this is postmodern, right? Because it's the, it's the uh, antithesis to the modern worldview. So this postmodern worldview, they call POMO, developmental psychologists call it POMO, and they have a term now I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm saying this because it's important that we feel into it. They have a term now for the new age, new thought, mindfulness communities, yoga communities, new thought community, life coaching communities. I'm not naming any names. I'm not saying this is 100%, but you do the math. And the term is POMO light. That's the term. 
because they have virtually no understanding about anything, any of this. It's just all deconstructionism. It's just, oh, I hate corporations. I hate capitalism. I hate religion. All we need is love. Really? Well, Nazi mothers love their sons very, very, very deeply. We don't need more ethnocentric love. We need more world-centric, universal-centric love. There's no Eden. Eden is up here. It's growth to goodness, not return to goodness. With that said, there are very important, enduring features of each of these stages that we have to incorporate into this. And the next vertical movement of evolution is into E6, construct aware, a post postmodern elevation. Yeah, I said it. It's vertical. It's a life altitude that opens up metamind and metacognition that is not locked in the flatland deconstruction of Homo. And a big part of this work, of which we're producing research on, Allison Holmes, where are you at? Raise your hand, right there. We're working with a German developmentalist, integral meta theorist that is a genius that chose us to work with because our new human university community is showing signs that we are catalyzing people to this next stage of human evolution. And he's created with Stephen Allison, me to a lesser degree, I think the most sophisticated developmental instrument that's ever been created. And it incorporates Suzanne Cook Greuters and Jane Lovinger's, the two most tested developmental instruments that have ever been created. And we use that within the Metamodern Mystery School, which is within the New Human University. And so we're measuring this movement into Epoch 6 and the opening of Metamind out of the postmodern mind. Metamind doesn't just see its own narrow bandwidth. It sees itself as one with the entire evolutionary process. It sees itself having embodied all the way back to the Big Bang, all of the matter and energy that wound itself up into greater degrees of complexity that resulted in your brain, the crown of creation, the most complex object in the known universe, is the higher structure of your brain. And it contains the same matter reformed and repurposed through 13.8 billion years of evolution that came out of the Big Bang. And you are that at the leading edge. And that has a corollary in your mind. As higher degrees of complexity of the brain formed, these higher degrees of consciousness, the higher mind form, until now we're at this place. And what we're doing is waking the brain up in a way that we get energy into those higher centers that have to cor that correlate with this next stage of the evolution of our minds. So the higher mind can emerge as the higher brain gets metabolized. Is everybody with me?